so welcome to um, a lecture that we're calling Here is Bitcoin. This is a walkthrough of some of the basic elements of Bitcoin, uh, some of the things that we need to know in order to get grounded in our discussion about what we're even talking about or where we even begin our discussion, especially for those of you who are brand new to Bitcoin and maybe haven't seen much more than maybe a headline here or there. So this is an introduction, an overview of some of the topics, and over the course of the class, we'll dig into some of the topics in more detail and uh, kind of flesh it out a little bit. Okay, so the first question that maybe we should try and throw out there is, when someone says, what is Bitcoin? What are answers that people usually give? Well, a common answer is that people will say that Bitcoin is a new kind of digital currency. It's a, um, a, new, a new way of buying and selling things. It's a new kind of money online. Um, another thing they might say is that it's just a way for people to buy and sell things using their computer. Um, it's just like uh, maybe other kinds of currencies that you use online in various kinds of ways. So I think from a sort of a popular media perspective, people would say generally Bitcoin is a digital currency. That's a pretty good place to start with our discussion. All right, but the thing is, is that Bitcoin has some particular qualities about it that are really different than many of the different sorts of currencies we've seen, even digital currencies that we've seen in the past. For example, it's decentralized. And that means that not only uh, does it not have a central authority, but the computation that's associated with Bitcoin is distributed among all the different people that participate in uh, the network. Um, by not having a central authority, we mean that there's no government uh, or no corporation that's responsible for running Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't have um, a, a, a certifying authority. It doesn't have a government um, that's responsible for it. It's decentralized because not only does it not have someone who is responsible for it, but it's also spread, uh, the work of doing Bitcoin is spread among all the people that are using Bitcoin. Another thing that's interesting about Bitcoin is that it's anonymous. It's anonymous in the sense that if I send someone else Bitcoin, the fact that I have sent that Bitcoin to someone else is, uh, is not known. It's, it's not clear who sent the Bitcoin, who, from whom the Bitcoin came, or to whom the Bitcoin is going. Um, and so th in that way, it's anonymous. And then finally, it's non-inflationary. For those people that are familiar with um, kind of monetary policy in state-backed currencies, like the dollar or the yen or the euro, uh, you know that inflation is something that uh, central banks worry a lot about, whether it's too high, whether it's too low, whether it should be higher, and whether it should be lower. Um, well, Bitcoin has this property that there's a maximum amount of Bitcoin that can come into existence um, in the long run. It's capped at about 21 million Bitcoins, and, um, and that number can't change. And so as a result, uh, it's not inflationary, meaning we cannot increase the supply of Bitcoins that are in the ecosystem. Um, and, and therefore, uh, the value of Bitcoin is going to be governed by um, what people make of it, not by the amount of Bitcoin that's in the system. In the same way that we traditionally think of adding dollars to the U.S. economy causes um, pressure for the value of the dollar to drop because there are more dollars in the system. Bitcoin's not like that. You can't add more Bitcoins over the uh, cap of the number of Bitcoins uh, that it will ultimately uh, be capped at. Okay. So these are some technological properties of Bitcoin. And we start very quickly to get um, two different kinds of uses of the word Bitcoin um, in the conversation around it. In on one side, there's a way of talking about Bitcoin in which you're talking about the technological properties of an algorithm that's, that's called Bitcoin. And you know, as an analogy, you might say that in this way, when you talk about Bitcoin, you're talking about pipes, uh, pipes through which money flows, all right? The other way that people talk about Bitcoin is not about the technology that enables it, but the Bitcoin itself or the currency that travels through the pipes. And when people talk about Bitcoin in this way, they're kind of talking more about the water that throws through, flows through the pipes. So when we talk about Bitcoin, we're actually conflating the two different things. On the one hand, there's a technology that's associated with moving currency, digital currency from one place to another place. And when, the other way that we use Bitcoin is when we talk about the currency that's moving from one place to another. So they're kind of two different ways in which people talk about um, Bitcoin, generally speaking. 
And one of the most important questions that I think we'll grapple with over the, over the uh, span of this course is whether or not Bitcoin is in fact money. That is a question that is uh, very social in nature and uh, we can look to other um, sorts of money in order to understand the qualities that money have and try and answer the question, does Bitcoin have the same properties that other things that we, we um, call money have?